you know, this is all the stuff I didn't say. I didn't want to be negative when I did mm-hmm. that first interview, but mm-hmm. this is, I feel this is stuff that people should know. They tried to grab my dick, man. Okay. So that's the hard one. All right, guys. Hi, welcome back to my channel. And today, uh, we have a guest, uh, who is obviously, you can see him already. Uh, I'll let him introduce himself, but yeah, he wanted to say something and we're going to give him a chance to say it. I don't usually do videos like this but you know if people want to see this type of content then i won't be opposed to it and in no way shape or form am i trying to encroach on other people's ideas or whatever because an interview is an interview and there's nothing new on the sun however uh please introduce yourself my guest uh my name's uh christopher uh call me chris um i i won't put his name out there i was previously interviewed by um, another YouTuber explaining my story um, of how I got here to Okinawa, Japan, and how I'm living on Zamami Island. Um, the reason I'm doing another interview, one, I like to support my people. You know, uh, I like to support creatives. Um, mm-hmm. And I felt like that first interview, I was still in a honeymoon phase, kind of under the spell. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, and I held back. There were some things I held back. I feel like I didn't say everything that was on my mind and there were some things that I didn't know about till now. So I wanted to give a fresh, raw perspective on things. Okay. Not too raw, but, I mean, yeah. I'm all for it. All for it. Um, <laughs> at, the the, at the end of the day, we are here to share the, the um, what's another word for experience? Because I guess that word is, it can't be used. Yeah. But to yeah. share our, our times, our tenure, what has happened in our tenure here in Japan and yeah. going on. So can you give us a little background info for those who actually didn't see the interview? Just uh, anything. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, um, I am from California, up the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. Uh, I uh, worked in the video game industry. I'm an artist. Um, I started out as a traditional artist. I could draw whatever I saw. Um I decided to make a career with it. I loved video games. You know, I loved animation. And I ended up kind of going the video game route. So, you know, I worked at places like EA, Sega, um, you know, indie game companies. And I just kind of uh, went from there. And uh, long story short, um, you know, worked at some big companies like Google and whatnot. Just kept moving up and up and up. And then I... Uh, long story short, I've met my wife and, uh, you know, uh, we got to know each other and, you know, three kids later, we, you know, we're in Okinawa, Japan. She was the island that we live on. It's called Zamami Island mm-hmm. and it's in, uh, Okinawa, Japan. And, uh, yeah, we decided that, you know, America just wasn't the biz, man. It, it just wasn't what our goals were pointing towards you know okay and we were both unhappy um you know with the living situation there we're just you know i couldn't see my kids growing up in that dangerous environment you Mm -hmm. know and i I know how i am with my kids and if somebody hurt my kids man i'm gonna be in prison you know Mm -hmm. so we decided you know we we made a snap decision just to go you know and we i sold my car you know whatever we couldn't take with this we gave it away or sold it and uh you know we're here and been here for a little over four years now mm. yeah a little over mm. four years oh, and uh yeah yeah we're here um i'm a freelance artist um i do 3d work uh, i kind of took a hit with covid mm. yeah and it kind of beat me i lost a ten thousand dollar job because of it as soon as it hit hard yeah mm. it hurt <laughs> um and my wife is a school teacher uh you know she does kindergarten uh, i got uh three boys you know i got one that's two i got another one that's five and then i have a 12 year old wow yeah. okay yeah i'm busy i'm a busy man you're busy <laughs> yeah in, the, in both ways always in all forms good good okay <laughs> yeah so yeah that's about it um yeah we're we're going to be leaving this island and i'm sure we'll get into that later on but mm-hmm. um certain situations and people too they're mm-hmm. just meant to be in your life for a certain amount of time okay you know 
certain situations. Supposed to be, it's a springboard. You're supposed to be here for a certain amount of time and then you go. Or this person's supposed to be in your life for a certain amount of time and then you outgrow them. That's just how it is, you know. Well, uh, yeah, we've kind of outgrown this island, you know. Mm. Uh, I know that's a whole other subject. You asked me who I was and all that stuff. I no, go, bro. This is your video, man. Okay. Go ahead. Right. Okay, okay. Well, uh, when I first did that first interview, I was, you know, telling people how much I loved it here, and I still do. The island's amazing. The physical island, the nature mm-hmm. is amazing. You know, mm-hmm. it's therapeutic. It's beautiful. It's great. The culture here is not great, though. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's it's a uh, very tourist trap. It's, it's very tourist trappy, mm. um, like Florida. It feels like Florida. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Or like, what's a good analogy? Okay, so you know when you're a kid, you go to Disney World. You're like, oh my god, the Cinderella, Mickey Mouse, oh my god, they're really here, you know. Mm-hmm. You, you're under that that illusion that it's all real, and then, but if you if you keep going, if you go back as an adult, you're like, man, there ain't nothing but dudes in goddamn costumes. You know, oh. you kind of see behind the curtain. Mm-hmm. You see how things really are. Mm-hmm. All that hospitality, family, this, you're this and that, you're welcome and all that. Mm-hmm. It's all bullshit, bro. It's all bullshit. So um, so you're saying that the hospitality in Japan is not genuine? Well, genuine? On this island. On, this, on the island, okay. Japan, uh, because I haven't explored it, but my mm-hmm. on this island, uh, that's how it is. Fake. Even mm. my wife is Okinawan, Island, who's from this island. Okay. She says she doesn't recognize this place. Really? She doesn't recognize. It. Yeah, it's like it's like in New York. Say you're in New York, you're in Brooklyn, because you know Brooklyn's getting gentrified. Right. So you know, or, or in Queens and all that. You know, this Pete, you know, white folks walking down the street asking you what you're doing there, but your family has been there for generations. generations. That's kind of what's yeah. happening to here. Uh, ah. Are coming to okay, no, ah, and changing the culture of the island. Up everything, but mm. it's not like the. How do I say this without being rude? It's not the cool mainlanders, man. It's like <laughs> the outcast. It's the it's the it's the ones that everything has a dollar sign on it. Everything mm. is an opportunity, and it, it attracts like scummy people here. You know, all they care about is money. You know, mm-hmm. and you see it, you feel it. Like I said, all that hospitality and all that. Oh, well, you're welcome, and all that. It's fake, it's fake, mm-hmm. it's fake. Everybody is about themselves here. Mm-hmm. Everybody is in their own little clique. Mm-hmm. You either in the hotel, you own a hotel group, or you own a diving shop group. It's like high school. Mm-hmm. It's like high school. It's like a mix of high school and living with your parents because everybody's in your business. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's in your business. I'm sit. I was sitting here at the computer, and I like to let sunshine in, right? Mm-hmm. So I open the window. I'm at my computer typing. Mm-hmm. I happen to look over, and I just see somebody just staring at me. <laughs> you see like, us? The- yeah, I'm like, man, looking through the window. I'm like, bro, what? Can I help you? <laughs> wow, wow, that's you're crazy. Watched. Especially being a foreigner, you're watched, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I don't like that. Uh, it's very gossipy. It's mm-hmm. very clickish. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, the physical island, I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. The water looks like glass. It's green all year round. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful, you oh. know? But people, there's some cool people here. But this place, the culture died a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me let me explain something. And I don't want to make this long-winded. So imagine, okay, the culture here, Okinawan culture, they have their own language, they have their right. own everything, their own clothing, everything, their own food. Well, it's become a roadside attraction. People do it. It's like putting on a costume. Right, 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 like right. Mm-hmm. And then they take it off. Mm. You know, and they just, they'll do the, the ace of throne dancing, but it's just for fun. Mm. It's not for culture. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. And everything here is just a show. It's just a show. I saw behind the curtain, man, and uh, you know, and then financially, there's no, there's no future here for me. Mm-hmm. My wife she speaks two languages, mm-hmm. and has a degree, a teaching degree, and uh, a certificate for babysitting. Mm-hmm. And you know, she's still being paid chump change. You know, she's mm-hmm. being paid chump change. They don't appreciate her. You know, they don't appreciate me. I've been here for four years, and they've never called on me. 
I, I'm a, I build computers. I maintenance them. I'm a 3D artist. I'm a graphic designer. Mm. I do good logos. Wow. All of them. Might have to check you they for a logo. Never, yeah. They, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, hit me up. But uh, they've never called on me for anything. Mm. They called on me like, hey, you want to lift that box? <laughs> oh, so basically, up? so are they playing into the stereotypes and they have a yeah. foreigners? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You want to lift stuff? You know, um, let me give you a good example. Now, I when I first got here, I wanted to try to get a job at the Welcome Center. When you get off the ferry, right? they had a Welcome Center. Now, there's a lot of English-speaking people coming through here. And mm. I asked about it. And they're like, oh, well, you know, you're Japanese. What's my Japanese? It's not great. There's no school here. So I'm learning a mix of Uchi Naguchi, which is the Okinawa language in mm. Japanese. And mm -hmm. there's no teacher. I'm just kind of taking in as I hear it, you know? Right. My Japanese is not great. So they're like, well, you're Japanese, you know, you got to have better Japanese. But here's the, here's the funny part. So they're like, oh, but they're hiring at the campground, right? So that was pretty much the same job. You'd be dealing with Japanese-speaking people and English-speaking people, mm. but it paid less. Mm. Paid less. It was a, it was a lesser job. Mm -hmm. So they're like, yeah, we could take that all day. Mm -hmm. But that other one, oh, you don't speak enough Japanese. You know, and I was like, yeah, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, it was a job where I worked at a hotel for a little bit and I quit in like the first week because I found out they were paying me two or three times, uh, I'll this? say dollars. It wasn't, it was yen, two, under, under minimum wage. Really? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is all the stuff I didn't say. I didn't want to be negative when I did mm -hmm. that first interview, but mm -hmm. this is, I feel this is stuff that people should know. You know, you got to take the good with the bad. Yes. Yin and yang. You need both. So basically then you're, you're saying that although Japan has its good points, there are also some very, very, um, there's some, th yes. there's some low points that you would need yep. to be aware of to temper yes. your expectation of kind of coming here. And, you know, what's interesting is that I have had a lot of, I would say, mixed experiences but in the grand mm -hmm. scheme of things in relation to like being shot at by police or being explicitly discriminated against or that sort of oh, thing it's not hands as, down better it's 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 better in that sense but what persons mm -hmm. always tend to do when it comes to discrimination or racism or or any form yeah. of prejudice is that it's a competition your thing is yeah. not as big as mine so therefore yeah. it can't be as bad no people handle yeah. things differently and people have different thresholds yeah thought they can tolerate yeah. and just so yeah. your wife you said your wife is okinawan and how yes. did you meet how did you meet her uh i met her through a friend uh mm -hmm. it, it, in fact their friend was dating somebody that was working at google oh, and nice. i was working at google at the same time and mm -hmm. it just kind of went from there mm -hmm. three kids later three kids later <laughs> <laughs> google okay so you came to japan four years ago and now mm -hmm. you're planning to move you, yeah, we're what you move okay. to the, the Big Island. The Big Island. Uh, now, me and my wife came to the conclusion. Like I said, a, a lot of I, I, I mentioned my wife because some people will be like, "Well, he's just being biased because he's a foreigner." Right. She's thinking the same exact thing that I'm thinking. She doesn't like being a teacher here because you're always on duty. It don't matter if you go home; you're still a teacher. So if somebody sees you outside, you're still Mari Sensei. Mm. Okay. You're not Mari. Uh, yes. You're Mari yeah, Sensei. Right. You have to dress like Mari Sensei. Even oh, if you're home, you have to dress like Mari Sensei. You can't, she can't do her nails. She can't wear jewelry. Well, she okay, can't okay. dye her hair. She can't do this. She can't do that. Mm -hmm. So she's feeling restricted and backed into a corner. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then she spends time at school, you know, at the school watching rich people's kids. Mm. There's a million people on this island mm -hmm. doing all this stuff for them that she can't do for her own kids. You know, mm. and that bothers her, you know, and on top of that, the island, she says she doesn't recognize. Mm. She doesn't recognize the island, the people here, the, the lack of the, the culture, you know, she doesn't recognize it anymore. And, and you know, it's just like a, um, a, it's the place is dying, you mm. know, yeah. sorry about that. <laughs> it messes with 24 seconds. Mm. Um, Man, I lost my train of thought, man. <laughs> yeah, so but, the place um, you're saying that the place is dying, and your wife recognized the place is dying. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know she's just doing stuff for other people's kids that she couldn't do for her kids, and so yeah, she feels yeah. trapped and, into and a corner. In the big island, we don't want to move there because it you're nobody there, and that's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. We love it going to the big island because we don't matter. 
and that's fine. Like, mm. I don't want to matter. I, I don't want people walking up and touching my, ooh, Niku, Niku, like, poking me, mm. like, because I'm bigger. Like, whoa, Niku. Or uh. commenting about, you know, when I was bigger, I had two pounds on me. Mm. You know, I wasn't, like, obese rolling myself down the street. But, mm-hmm. you know, I was bigger, but people had to say something to me about it. Yeah, it's, and, it's annoying. You know, that's you know, annoying. None of your goddamn business. Don't mm. say nothing to me about it. For one, if a woman says it, that's one thing. But a guy, I, I try to tell these dudes, I'm like, bro, mm-hmm. we don't do that in America. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, unless you, you know, unless you're a fancy boy, which, you know, hey, you know. But us, straight, we don't sit around and talk about. Or, uh, you know, I went to a bar here, and they're talking about my body. I'm like, bro, we sit here drinking beer. What the f is wrong with you, man? <laughs> like, mind you. Do- <laughs> I laugh, I laugh because I I go through the same thing, bro. It's like Did you get poked. Did I get, get poked. I get poked. <laughs> I have been yeah. I, yes, no. I get poked and I've been grabbed at. Grabbed? Yes. Yeah. No. They say, oh, they like saying they want to see. Oh, I heard foreigners are big, or I heard foreigners. Can I? I'm like, bro, that's not something you talk about, bro. And when I say man, people I, don't I, believe I, me, they don't believe bro, me because they tried, to, they tried to grab my dick, man. Okay, so that's the hard one. Yeah, that's 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 a hard pass for me, and it has happened to me already. But when I say yeah. these things, uh, Christopher, people don't believe me. They say I'm lying and yeah. all that stuff. No, so I'm lying. glad that you have had that experience. Yeah. So when this video goes up, and they're yeah. like, "Okay, so Andre isn't actually lying." Okay, nah, so, you ain't lying, man. Listen, my my Air Force friends came here, big group mm-hmm. of them, right? Mm-hmm. They came here. They had a festival, and there's a dude I know on the island that I work because I used to work for the park service. That's mm-hmm. a whole nother story. They're working like a Hebrew slave for minimum wage. All mm-hmm. other story. But uh, I told them about this. The same thing I'm telling you about right now. And they're like, no, nah, man. That do- no, no, nah, man. That doesn't happen. <laughs> and it happened, right in- it happened right in front of him. One of the guys came up and he knows me. So he tried to like, ooh, and I blocked him. And they're like, oh, shit. Did he really just do that? I'm like, man, I told you, bro. I told you. They do that. And they do the... the Concho. You know what? Yeah, the console. Yeah, yeah, one guy tried to do that while I was in the village office handling business. They didn't try to do that to me, man. And it's, know, and it's funny. Mm. I'm like, bro, I, and I try to explain to them that, please, if you ever plan on leaving Japan, please don't do that because you'll be in a pine box, you know, <laughs> or, or, you, or you'll be looking like, You'll be looking like a, a, a damn busted watermelon. I'm like, don't mm. do that. Don't do that, you know? And I'm like, you have to be cognizant of other people's culture. Culture. Yep. And space. Mm-hmm. Now, I understand when I come to Japan, I understand I have to adopt certain things. That's fine. Mm. That's fine. Perfectly reasonable. Okay. But I'm not going to give up who I am. And I'm not going to give up my sense of space, like my, my field of space. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you can't come up. And start poking on me or touching me or asking me about my junk. Some of these people think I'm walking around with a telephone pole in my pants. You know, the, the, yeah, the questions at work, at work, my mm. guy, mm. at work. And I'm like, you know, there's certain things that kind of bug me here. Now, don't get me wrong, there's some good people here. But no, no, I don't know. Not, not enough of them. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I would say, well, where, where, where I was living in Toyota. I found that, mm. you know, more often than not, they were just mostly misunderstood. And once I told them, like, hey, this is something that I don't, I'm not comfortable with and I've been, it is not how I grew up, they understood. Mm. And anybody else that came in that circle, they were like told, hey, you don't do this to this guy, okay? That because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that I can understand. Yeah. I, a lot of it is about ignorance. And the, yeah. the real issue I find with a lot of Japanese people is that they do not know or try to learn about other person's culture yeah because yeah, i've warned them i told them don't do that but they still like do it <laughs> and i'm like it, it's it's almost like dealing with the old person that's setting their ways yep you know mm-hmm. there ain't no way you could change it we've nope. been doing it this for hundreds thousands yes. of years uh, and we're just gonna mm-hmm. keep doing it mm-hmm. and no matter if your way is good or not we're not gonna do it indeed you know so yeah, that's kind of what I'm dealing with. Uh, the lack of money, mm-hmm. you know, there's no future for me on this island. My wife, her situation is not going to get much better. Mm-hmm. She feels claustrophobic. I feel claustrophobic. 
I, I don't even like really going outside anymore because I just feel like everybody's just watching. Mm. You know, and it's like it's like I, I like people gossip so much here. You can hear it. It's like a hen house. You know, <laughs> that's all you hear. Is just, just like an old hen house, man. You know, mm. and I just get sick and tired of it, and I find myself kind of backing away. Same thing with mm-hmm. my wife, just backing away, backing away, backing away, and I don't want to be like that. I'm a social mm-hmm. person. You know, mm. I, I came here to make like lifelong friends, but like I said, this place was not it. This is like going to Vegas and expecting to make life with I lived in Vegas. You don't make lifelong friends there. You 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 make friends that you go out to the club with and get drunk. Mm. You know, then everything's short term. Then after they're done, there'll be another group of friends. You know, and that's kind of how this place is. I've had. I've had no real connection. There's one guy on the island that's cool, but I've had real, no real connection here. I haven't connected to anybody because everything just feels fake, you know? Mm. And uh, one thing that's a little uncomfortable, one thing I do miss about America is uh, that people were kind of up front. And it was always kind of, it wasn't always great, but they was up front. Mm-hmm. Here, they may hate you. But they're going to be like, oh, konnichiwa, you smile all in your face, and then you turn your back and you're like, you know, and, you know, I just, mm-hmm. I, I kind of don't like that, you know, but we're, we're yeah, we're, we're, we definitely feel more at home on the big island mm-hmm. because, you know, we just feel like we fit in better. It's not so claustrophobic. We have the freedom to live life the way we want to live it. Okay. You know? Yeah. So... What about your children? What is do you what what about for your children? Uh, let's say let's say bullying. What has their experience been like in your perspective? And do you find mm-hmm. raising them on the island is a benefit as opposed to being raised on the mainland, as opposed mm-hmm. to being on the okay. main island? Like, what are your feelings towards raising kids in Japan and the respective places? Okay, okay. Well, I'll start with this island first. Mm-hmm. I I think it's good. Because of the fact that it's safe, mm. you know the school's safe. You know, um, I feel like things are a little bit more personal with the teachers, like the smaller groups, so they can, you know, it's yeah, more care, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, it just feels more personal, more family oriented. They haven't had any. I think twelve year old had a scuffle with a kid when he first got here, but they ended up being friends. And then there was another problem with a boy that tried to touch his wiener, and I'm like, hey problem with that boy <laughs> you know and mm. they got over that now they're friends now there's no issues now so there was you know, there was a couple little normal weird scuffles you know but mm-hmm. other than that they've been accepted you know my kids mm. speak both english and japanese oh, that's nice. you know um, yeah they speak both um there's there's been no issues with that uh my only problem with the education system here is that i feel like they are okinaw which is a different culture it's a different mm-hmm. culture they they're not getting that. They're getting mainland education, which is educa- education is different up there. The culture, yeah. they teach the culture, is a different culture. Right, right. And, yeah, and they don't get enough of that here, where if they're on the big island, they'll get more of that. They'll be ex- and they'll experience. The thing is, I want them to experience a lot of things. You know, uh, here they won't get those experiences. I don't want them just to know this island. I want them to know, you know, about other people, other races, mm. other mm-hmm. cultures, other, you know. I want their world to be big. Where I find mm. some of the kids from this island, some of the people here, their world is that big. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, mm. yeah. I mean, I, I have really have no gripes about the education here. It's pretty mm. good. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just I want my kids to have the best education possible, possible, and I want them to experience more. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. do you? So, my, my kids, you don't have to worry about my kids being bullied. My kids would kick somebody's ass, man. I got some big, solid boys. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I don't right. have to worry about anybody. Else. Are we worried about them being bullied? I'm like, you see my boys? <laughs> yeah, not yeah. happening. <laughs> mm, okay, that's, well, that's, that's good. And, and I hope that, yeah. and also so a lot of children who have both, uh, who have both foreign and Japanese parents, a lot of them mm. don't, they end up not having. A lot of them have identity issues, like who do they mm-hmm. identify with and which part of my culture is acceptable and which part of it isn't. And so yeah. uh, based on how you're speaking, I think your kids will be very grounded and know who they are. Mm-hmm. And based on yeah. what you're, you're saying about your wife, I find that both yeah. of you have a fairly good understanding of what is good and what's acceptable. Uh, exactly. 
but she, she's she's mm-hmm. kind of a hybrid. So I'm mm-hmm. sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. She's no, kind of a hybrid. She finds it like the way that people act here, it offends her. <laughs> it offends her. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, you tried to grab what? You tried to touch? Don't do that. You know, she she's a hybrid. She spent years in the U.S. Mm-hmm. almost a decade. Oh, you know? so, so that was her thinking would be yeah. different as well. Yeah, I find yeah, that yeah. she mm-hmm. knows. So yeah, we she still has the Japanese culture or the Okinawan Japanese culture. But she mm-hmm. also has part of the American culture too, to where she knows, like, yeah, don't don't do that, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so they are getting the best of both worlds. Mm. That, that's good to know as well. So, what can you give me? Uh, one any other like something different, like a fun story that happened to you in, in your time in Okinawa, something that that you laugh about today. Uh, anything funny that has happened with you in terms of a weird experience or something weird that's happened uh... to you. Uh, well, when I went to, uh, it, it, it kind of got a kick out of it when I was in, uh, on the big island, mm-hmm. uh, I had this random girl just like run up to me, super excited, super excited. Mm-hmm. Like, like it ran up to me, like shook my hand, like, oh, it was nice to meet you, shook my hand and then was gone. <laughs> and mind you, <laughs> this is, yeah. Wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, she was super excited, shook my mm-hmm. hand, and he just popped. Now, mind you, this is after Kim Jong Un killed his brother with the whole touching thing. Oh, remember that? I was freaked out yeah. for a minute. I'm like, Did she just... like minutes to live. <laughs> I went to the bathroom and washed my hands. Mm. Yeah, my wife, she did it right in front of my wife. It's like, ran up and was like, oh, yeah, nice to meet you, and then just took off. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Well, okay. then, then I had a much better experience. It was a group of like schoolgirls that came up to me, and she, you know, she was kind of shy. She kind of looked, and then she talked to her friends, and she was, I guess, she was the one that understood the most English, and they all had questions, but they kind of talked through her. Oh, like and a proxy. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, she was like, hey, "Do you mind if I?" You know, she was very polite. Do you mind if I ask you some questions? You know, I was like, "Sure." And so she just started asking me questions about like, you know, why I was here, what do I think about here, you know, what's America like, all that stuff. And so that was pleasant, mm-hmm. you know, that was pleasant. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I enjoyed that. That was, uh, that was nice. It wasn't uh, funny, but it was just pleasant. First, I'm kind of, it's funny after the fact. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> after after the fact, because any other way, yeah. Watch you too much yeah. shoes when you're, mm, poison, touch. Oh, no. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like. Because it happened right after that. I was like, oh, damn, I pro- I'm probably dead. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> how are the relationship with your with your wife's parents? Like, how is what's that like? You know, when I, I'm not going to lie. Before I got here, mm. I was like, man, I'm probably going to have issues. I'm probably not going to be accepted. Man, this is one time I will admit that I was wrong as hell. Mm. Um, when I got here, my computer, uh, went corrupt. My, my drive, I lost all of my work, like years of work, like wow. 3d work, like whole wow. models. Wow. Lost it. wow. And it's an SSD. So it's not recoverable. Right. Yeah. So I lost all that work. Um, come to find out like my, a lot of the programs I used, they were had like work functions. So the, pro- the stuff I had, I couldn't use it anymore. I had to start from scratch and we spent thousands of dollars to get here thousands of dollars for other stuff to prepare for the trip right her pockets is kind of flapping in the wind so i I just told him i'm like i'm a computer guy my work is going to be on the computer and you know i didn't want to ask but Mm. i put my pride aside to ask him you know can i get you know money to a loan and he's like here's a card Mm. (laughs) that sounds nice so yeah and mm -hmm. and i paid him back you know I, i i paid him back in full but you know, he was just like his car. You know, um, you know, he, I have my own team. We're in his. We're in the family house. It's mm-hmm. a big house. It's a West house, not a Japanese house. Okay. But um, you know, uh, he. I have my own office here. You know, we have the whole upstairs. It's a big house, oh. and uh, he, he's been he's been very welcome, very mm-hmm. welcome. Um, you know, he's a good guy. My family accepted me. You know, they're they're. I've had no issues. Mm. So I've you had no issues. Oh, so you actually live with the parents? Well, the the mother has passed, but the father. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. My kid's grandfather. Yeah. Oh, my my condolences to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it it happened. It happened almost about what ten years ago. Yeah. Mm. She had a heart attack here and just was gone. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but uh, 
Yeah, yeah, she, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just him, and he was here for all these years <laughs> by himself, and then like we come back with the grandkids. And yeah, us, he's like happy. He's just happy. Yeah, yeah he's happy. Mm. <laughs> his friends are complaining, like you don't come over no more. How come you don't come over no more? It's just like. <laughs> 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 Nice, nice, nice. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Like, like anything you really wanted to get out there as um, a message to people? Well, I want people to know I'm not being negative. I'm not being racist. I just feel like there's things that people need to know. I've had a lot of people contact me and be like, I'm moving there, you know, I'm going there. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm like, I probably didn't explain things right. I made it like it was just like perfect. And I, I feel bad for that because there's some very impressionable people out there, like mm-hmm. easily influenced, you know? And so I felt it was my duty to come back and kind of give you both sides to the story, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, if you move to, a re- especially a remote island, mm-hmm. be prepared for the ignorance. Be prepared for people to see stuff on tv and expect that out of you know Mm. be prepared uh be prepared for people with the ignorant comments because that's what it is it's not like america when somebody said when somebody says stuff in america it's not a straight malice Mm. you know uh here it's just ignorance you know lack of exposure you Mm. know um yeah you know just be prepared for that just like living in the country you know just be prepared for that uh, one thing I, I'll say this, I'll give the positive side. If you come to Japan with a plan, mm-hmm. okay. And with a strong mind, you can do whatever you want here. You can make things happen. Mm. You know, uh, there's not that glass ceiling, like in America, like every, every time in America, I felt, you know, I tried to move up, move up. I felt like I was always bumping my head on something. Mm. Couldn't see it. I'm like, damn, what am I bumping my head on? You know, but I felt like I was always bumping my head here. If you can get past the tribalism, you mm-hmm. know, the tribalism and all that, you can do a lot here, you mm-hmm. know, especially if somebody that's, you know, of African descent, you know, you can do well here. Um, mm-hmm. I would say if you're going to come here, just do your research. Do your research. Not every area in Japan is the same. Do your right. research. Make sure right. it's someplace you want to be. Right. You know? But people don't want to sure hear that. You be. People don't want to yeah. hear that, though. They want to be, oh, give me the answer that will work for me. They yeah. don't want to do their own selves. You know, we can't make you make up your mind. You have to see if this is what you can tolerate. If you're willing to tolerate, right. if you're going to a cold area, the winters, if you can tolerate yep. being remote, if you can tolerate yep. not being on a main island where there's only mm-hmm. maybe even one convenience store. You, ha- you have to yep. know what your level of tolerance is. And until you yeah. come to grips with that, you can't be ever ready to move to Japan. And what no. about persons that, what about people I would say uh, based on the, being black and being another race, um, being white in Japan, I have two I have two different experiences, but there are also similarities. But for my years here, I found yeah. and seen, I don't have the actual empirical data, clearly, but yeah. it seems that another race is able to get bet- better or easier jobs in Japan yeah. Than, yeah. than our fellow well, black brothers and sisters. The whole, I will say this, um, the whole... <laughs> Uh, what do you call it, white monkey jobs. Mm. Uh, That's all over Asia. That's all over Asia. Um, Mm. If you don't know what the term is, look it up. It's when white people just get, oh, you're just being white. Here you go. You know, oh, we don't want to show a Chinese doctor. We want to show a white doctor saying that there's a breakthrough. They hired just some random white guy to dress Mm. up as a doctor to make it like he came up with the, yeah, whatever. Mm. uh, There is that here. Um, I've seen it. Um, it's not as bad as places like China, mm-hmm. you know, or Korea, but it is here. Uh, and the, 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 the crazy thing is, is that you talk to like, for some reason, there's a lot of British people in Japan. Yeah. You know? And uh, you'll talk to them about it. It would, like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I love it. Dude. It's perfect. Mm. This, you know, what are you talking about? Like they make it like you're making up certain things, you know? You know, like I told them about the touch in. Oh, you just understood them. It's just their culture. I'm like, no, that's this culture, and then there's lack of manners. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and uh, it, it's almost like you tell them the things that you're experiencing, and they try to normalize. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you're just overreacting that he grabbed your dick. Let him grab it. Let him <laughs> grab it. 
to yeah, show it's, it's, it's submit like, sub man, submit to him and sh- let him yeah. grab your thing and show him that you're the boss and be kind because once you're in japan you have no rights as a foreigner to be honest you have rights but it's not a lot of unwritten rules here that basically it's a lot of it's a lot of just deal with it yeah just deal with it, you know and i'm sorry i'm i'm that nail what is it nail that that six cell gets hammered down yeah man you ain't gonna hammer me down listen you ain't gonna hammer. I'm gonna always. I'm gonna be that nail. You ain't gonna hammer me down. I'm gonna be me. I'm gonna be respectful. I'm gonna. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna follow your laws. I'm gonna <laughs> respect your culture. But you have to respect me, and you're not gonna beat me down and take away who I am. Hmm. Okay. I'm always be black. I'm always be American. I'm always be Chris, and yes. that's all there is to it. You know. And people need to accept that. The whole you're in Japan. Do as we say. Speak as we speak. All that. Listen, to a certain extent, but I'm not giving up who I am because when I was in, working at Google, okay, it's on the Bay Area. It's over near San Francisco, mm-hmm. okay? There's a huge Asian, especially Japanese community over there. Mm-hmm. And when they come over there, they are still Japanese, oh. okay? Uh-huh. In Japantown, they are still Japanese. They still do their thing and act just like they were still in Japan. You, oh. you know what I'm saying? Mm. And, and that's fine. I'm okay with that, you know, but yeah, when you come here, it feel like some people just want you just, especially the older folks, they just want you just to give up who you are, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like even my father-in-law, he said something one day about, I don't remember what it was about. And I told him, I'm like, uh, I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm not Japanese, you know, I'm not Japanese. And I had to like remind him like, Hey, mm-hmm. this is not a tan, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I wasn't born here, you know, and I'm like, I'm not Japanese. You can remember that, you know? But, mm-hmm. yeah, man, I mean, it, it's not all rain clouds here, man. I, I, I don't want to come off like that. It's not all rain clouds. I just wanted to give people the other side, mm-hmm. you know. Um, is it all right if I say the other person's name who interviewed me? I was interviewed by Ronzo. He uh, has the channel uh, Black Experience in Japan. And, um, yeah, that's where I, if you haven't checked it out, I guess go ahead and check it out so you can kind of get the other side. Now, I'm not saying the stuff that said in that video was a lie. It was not a lie. The truth. There's some good people here. I did have a good time here, but I started, after a while, you got to get down to business and kind of look at things straight. And I started doing that. I started kind of putting things together. Do I have a life here? Answer was no. Do I have a future? No. You know, uh, do I want to check out other parts of, you know, Okinawa? Because I like the warm weather here. Oh, the man. Answer was yes. Mm-hmm. It's warm. It stays green all year round. I, I would kill for that, actually. <laughs> we, we, even even during the winter, like our winter, it's it's hot as hell. I'm sweating right now. You know, this is. I mean, our winter is like fall. It's like a warm fall. It's like Jamaica. Know? Oh God, Jamaica. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yep. Same same type of weather. Yeah, but uh, you know, I would say to anybody, come here and experience it first. Check it out. Don't just come here. Mm. Don't just come here, you know. Especially, I'm lucky. I came here with somebody that was from here. Mm. Don't come here by yourself and just plop yourself down. You will be solo bolo, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. You'll be out there all by your lonesome, man. And you know, it could. This is not something you want to go through alone. Mm. You know, you want a team with you. So, yeah, that's about it, man. <laughs> All right, Christopher, thank you very much for, uh, I guess, joining and sharing your story and being, uh, well, being truthful and yeah. also just, just, just letting it hang. Let's just, just expressing yourself how you felt um, you, you need, needed to express yourself. Uh, please leave yeah. your socials for people to get at you, to follow you and that, your company yeah. site and that. Mm-hmm. Uh, his, his stuff will be in the description of the video below. I'll put up something as well there on the screen. And make sure to follow and subscribe. Uh, Pickles the guy, Ginger Binkin YouTuber, and I am signing out. So see you next time, guys. Out. Peace. Take care, everybody. Alrighty.